Hi, Aquarius. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for August of 2021. Well, this month, there's a gathering of planets in Virgo, which means your eighth house, which means the arena of intimacy, which can encompass sexual relationships, emotionally intimate relationships, and also financially entwined relationships. If you find that after this horoscope, you've got more questions than answers about that arena, you can find a link for the lifelong love reading in the YouTube description below. Well, relationship retrospection has been the theme of the last couple of months because Juno has been traveling along retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius, demanding that our relationships grow and that we approach our relationships with a view to how they can grow. So if you've been feeling trapped in your relationships, this would be why. This uh, for you falls in your 11th house, which is the domain of friends, networks, tribe, community, people of like mind. So if relationships in your community have become difficult to manage, they've become entangled and you're feeling like you need more freedom, Juno retrograde probably has something to do with that. But the really good news is Juno is going to go direct on August 2nd. So we'll be out of the woods by the end of August, although Juno is going to spend the most of August in her shadow period, which means that, you know, we're still putting the pieces together and, um, and just figuring out, you know, what is all the stuff that emerged in our relationships during the last four months. So, Julia, uh, you've got some news about Mercury, Venus, and Mars, I believe. I do. Well, hey, Aquarius. We'll start with Mercury. That's the planet that represents our thinking, our mind, and wherever it is in our chart is usually where we're communicating a lot or strategizing somehow. So Mercury begins the month in your seventh house of partnership. This house rules all one-to-one -one relationships, your romantic partner, platonic partner, as well as business partners and consultants. So the first 11 days of the month, you could be doing your best thinking by bouncing your ideas off someone else. It's also a wonderful time to hire a consultant if you need uh, someone like a doctor, a lawyer, a counselor to get a little bit of advice or like come up with a strategy together. And then on August 11th, Mercury moves into the eighth house. A lot of eighth house activity for you, Aquarius. So I'll just take a second to explain it. The eighth house is the house of shared finances. So finances you share with people close to you, like through a joint credit card, or even institutions like mortgages, loans, taxes, uh, insurance, all these other types of things, investments as well. So when Mercury moves into the 11th, um, you could be spending a lot of, or excuse me, moves into your eighth house on August 11th, you could spend a lot of time thinking about your, um, about your shared finances, maybe strategizing about them. Uh, the eighth house is also a very kind of hidden house that has a lot to do with research and investigation. So it's a wonderful transit if you need to research anything, whether that's in your personal or professional life. However, be cautious about getting a little too paranoid too. Then mm -hmm. Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships begins the month in your eighth house. So wherever we have Venus is where we can get a little luck, get a little bit of pleasure too. So with Venus in the eighth house, you could get a little financial luck in your shared money, either with people or with institutions. This transit also has a way of increasing the intimacy in your romantic relationship as well. Um, and you also just might find more pleasure in, in researching, investigating, especially uh, with things that have to do with social taboos that are also ruled by the eighth house. Then Venus on August 15th, so the second half of the month, is going to move into your ninth house. That's the house of the higher mind. It's the house of travel, learning, and uh, when Venus moves into this house, it's a wonderful time to take like a little pleasure trip. If you have a vacation planned, you could even have a little bit of a holiday romance. If you're single, you might be attracted to somebody who comes from a really different background than you, even if you have to stay put and work and not travel. Um, and it could be a fun time in your relationship if you're attached to sort of have some adventures with your, your partner or do something kind of consciousness expanding as well, which is all ruled by the ninth. Now, Mars, the planet of action and activity is going to spend the whole month in the eighth house. So wherever we have Mars is where we could run into some frustrations and flare-ups as, 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 
as well as where we can be very, very driven. So since Mars is in the eighth house all month, you might run into some arguments or some flare ups over shared money, uh, which can be a little annoying. And um, you also might feel very, again, driven uh, by eighth house activities. Uh, this is the house of investigation and research. So you could be, you know, expending a lot of energy in these areas as well. Indeed. And I forgot you mentioned this before, but um, with all of these themes in the eighth house of intimacy and Mercury making you want to have those deep conversations with your partner, mm. uh, Mars making you want to uncover the truth and Venus, you know, making it so much more easy and smooth to have those conversations. Um, Juno retrograde, I think, is, has been, you know, has really kind of come to a head. Uh, for you specifically. And uh, if you want to know more about Juno retrograde, we made a video for it a couple of months ago. It's in our June 2021 news playlist. That's where you can find out more about Juno retrograde and how to get some resolution with it. Well, I want to return to a little earlier in the month where there is a new moon on August 8th. And this is in the sign of Leo right here in your seventh house of relationship of partnership, bringing the emphasis there. It's a moon in Leo. So there is that quality of big personality, of, um, of uh, self-involvement, certainly, and attention seeking. But this moon has a really sweet trine to Chiron. And so we're calling this one pride springing from wholeness, not ego. And it's also a choice because Uranus is here too, bringing in some irritation by squaring that moon and that Uranus could pull you to, um, you know, just sort of be the weirdo who has to grab all the attention. But Chiron is saying, you don't have to do that. You can just chill and just, you know, recognize that you can afford to be proud of yourself, but it doesn't have to be something you slather all over other people. Now, uh, I'm not even saying that Aquarius, this is something that you're likely to do in your behavior. It's more, really more likely to be uh, showing up in your partnerships, but um, I just wanted to let you know what those energies are about. And there's uh, always more about the moons of the month in the monthly playlist. So in the August playlist, you're going <clears> to <throat> find out more about this moon. And um, the next thing I want to tell you about is that Uranus is going retrograde. Here it is sitting in your fourth house where Uranus has been traveling for some years already, uh, kicking up the unusual and the unexpected, bringing some nervous energy perhaps to home, family, do domestic life, heritage, and roots, um, possibly some shifts in perspective about your family, your heritage, your home life. Um, even a move of house is likely to happen as Uranus is traveling through the fourth house. And it usually spends about seven years there. So really, who knows exactly which of those years without having a more specific look at your personal chart. Um, but I will tell you that when Uranus turns retrograde, and we're going to see the little red RX symbol appear right here. When Uranus turns retrograde, there's often a sort of a, a pivotal day that happens. It's like the conceptual shift process really kicks in. And, uh, and so um, if you find that around that day, around the 20th, the 21st, somewhere within a week surrounding that point, you have all this agitation and nervous energy and you feel like you just kind of uh, can't really put your roots down, then um, this Uranus retrograde might have something to do with it. We've made a video about Uranus retrograde transits, how they feel and how to handle them. And if you wanna find out more about it, it is also in the August 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel. And the next thing I want to tell you about is there is a full moon in Aquarius coming <clears throat> right about here, <clears throat> uh, August 21st, 22nd actually. And uh, the sun is in Aquarius in its second full moon in Aquarius within a month. And uh, Jupiter is there with it. We're calling this one Hot Summer Night Party Moon because it's in August, you know, um, hot time of the year. And uh, it's very social because the moon is in Aquarius, signifying groups, uh, great time for a party. 
Jupiter's presence certainly adds to the gregarious nature of this party, but uh, this moon uh, and the party nature, you might say, but Jupiter can go over the top when retrograde. So uh, if you do host a party or attend a party, beware of bad behavior uh, under this full moon. Instead, go outside, look up into the sky and look at the big, beautiful moon with uh, Jupiter shining right next to it. Um, and of course, there's a video about that in our um, YouTube uh, playlist for August. And then the final thing I want to tell you about is that the sun moves into Virgo right here on the 22nd and then proceeds into your eighth house and through your eighth house for the rest of the month. And, um, and so this just brings attention right back to that arena of intimacy and your connections, even your entanglements with other people, whether they be emotional, physical, or financial. And wherever the sun goes, the spotlight of attention follows. Attention is like sunlight. When you spread it around, you encourage things to grow. And, um, and so bringing some of the spotlight of attention into the arena of intimacy can bring secrets to light that have been poisoning the system and can, um, you know, can kind of aid in the purging process that goes on there. So that's what we have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it, Aquarius. And if you did, please share this video and subscribe to our channel. You can always find us on the net at pandoraastrology.com, where you can find your horoscopes, the monthly forecast, take a class or get a reading. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.